السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whenever you are, wherever you are uh, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whenever you are, wherever you are Hello, Dr. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I greet you with all the greeting that you need to listen to. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Uh, and I'm wishing you all the best wherever you are, whenever you are. And today, inshallah, we'll talk about the same talk which I mentioned in Arabic last Tuesday. It's about the relationship between the charitable work and pyramids and stairs. What is the relationship between the charitable work and pyramids and stairs? First of all, let me uh, thank my colleague, uh, Ali Shawa, for preparing the media material for the presentation. And let us start our talk, inshallah, in a second. This an idea came to me, which is a week ago. And uh, it's a professional societal reality. This idea, which I'm talking about with you today, based on community experience. Yani it's community experience, my experience. So what is this idea? And what do we mean by pyramids and stairs? What do we mean by pyramids and stairs? And what's the relationship between pyramids and stairs and the charitable work? The philosophy of this idea lies in the hands of young people like all of you. All of you who are watching me now. Then. now who must always try to think outside the box. The idea is to how to think outside the box. How to think outside the box. We have to get rid of the stereotype traditional thoughts and follow the principles of experimental, applied, progressive, creative, criterion dimension. What we need to follow, experimental, applied, progressive, creative, criterion dimensions. On these five principles, which will enable me and you to uh, build our pyramids. Point number one, the foundation of building these pyramids is number one, scientific, practical, experimental base, five bases, scientific, Practical experimental base. Second one, social applied field work. Social applied field work. Our idea or my idea, which I'm talking about, based on scientific practical experimental base, social applicable field work, randomly changing progressive base, randomly changing, and you keep changing the idea. Take the taking the risk of changing your idea. Progressive base. Motivational, creative, pioneering. And your idea should be motivational or pioneering. To be motivational and pioneering. The last and not, not least, divine uh, characteristic. The divine characteristic, complementary partnership base. You have the idea, the five principles of the five bases of this idea of building the pyramids will be based on being, uh, being uh scientific practical experimental social applied field work uh, randomly changing taking risk motivational motivational creative pioneering and the last divine criteria <coughs> criterion complementary partnership these bases represent the idea of building the different pyramids if you want to build the six pyramids which i'm talking about later on we have to follow these ones these bases represent the idea of building the different pyramids and making the one amongst them rise from one pyramid to second pyramid, from second pyramid to third pyramid, from third pyramid to fourth pyramid. Rise intellectually, philosophically, and practically from one pyramid to another. This is what I'm talking about. And you have to take the risk, you have to experiment, we have to apply our idea in the field, 
and you have to be motivated. It has to be motivating, pioneering, and it has to be divine based uh, uh, as well. What are the tough, different types of pyramids I'm going to talk to you about inside the inside the charitable work? Number one, emotional reactionary. Number two, social compassionate. Number three, intellectual philosophical. Number four, ambitious progressive pyramid. Number five, exploring the different worlds, planets, galaxies, and pyramid. Number six, divine science experience. Then we consecutively, consecutively and successfully will be observed, be able to observe the emergences of finite knowledge pyramids among us, the sprawling world universe. So these are the six pyramids. Once we go from one to another, based on the five principles which I mentioned earlier on, actually we'll be able to build an infinite pyramids building. And you can see here that you are the young man here in this in this photograph, in this image, trying to explore what is behind, you know, trying to take the risk, trying to make a positive action to explore what's going on. It goes from the emotional to the social to the intellectual to the ambitious to swimming among the galaxies to the divine uh, knowledge to at the end actually the consecutive appearing uh, for uh, this kind of divine knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do you mean by the emotional pyramid? Emotional pyramid is where we stuck the humanitarian work. All of us are extremely good. Good. Good at what? In fundraising to try to raise money for an emergency. Try to raise money for an emergency. Like actually, when the, uh, uh, fire happened, earthquake, uh, flooding, uh, armed conflicts, uh, displacements, uh, victims of rape, and all, and find everybody, everybody in the community will be able to stand up and cry and shout and come out to respond to this kind of emergency. That's why this is the this is the common this is the common and actually pyramid which is not specialized pyramid this is the most common pyramids that we are facing and most of us are actually uh, uh, could be good in doing that and unfortunately all or most of our organization are actually very good in reacting to emergencies raising hundreds of millions of dollars this is the pyramid number one because we look at the situation as masses, not as individuals, not as communities, it was masses. We have 100,000 refugees, we have uh, uh, 1 million displaced people, like what's happening in Syria and in Yemen and others. Then when we zoom in, when we zoom in, actually, we look at the social infrastructure of the society, which is the pyramid number two. We look at the social infrastructure of society, which is problem number two, and to address different kind of problem affecting the society, like children problem, like women's problem, like uh, uh, psycho, psycho needs, people need social support, uh, like water problem, like uh, health and sanitation problem, like all this kind of things, which now started to zoom in to see what the community needs from us, from the mass, Actually, the action of uh, responding to the disaster, to settling the people down, then looking inside the community of those people, displaced people, or the refugees, and see what is the real need for each people, for each individual inside the society and inside the community. This is the second pyramid. So move from the reaction style to the less uh, reaction and more thinking to start to respond to the actual needs of each and every individual to be more complicated. If our society, if our society is stable, enjoying our freedom, have a stable government, have a, a sustainable economy, and, 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 and we'll be able to move to the third pyramid. Because the third pyramid, we talk about headhunting. 
for uh, uh, philosophy and uh, uh, intellectual uh, cultural to to who they done from for the future leaders of the society. So once we settle down in a very stable, free society, democratic society, democratic country, we'll be able to take a deep breath and to look at the the young pioneer men and uh, male and female and to make them community leaders and to make them future leaders and to make them actually global leaders as well. So we're so moving the first pyramids from the reaction, the second pyramid to look at the composition of the infrastructure and the needs of the society or the community, then take a deep breath because we have the time and we have the facilities and we have the resources to be able to look at the pioneers among us, the young people and the pioneers, whether male or female, to make out of them the future leaders or the current leaders. So move from the reaction to the thinking, to the head hunting, to try to create the leaders for the society and for the future. So from pyramid number one to pyramid number two to pyramid number three, but we cannot go from two to three unless we live in a very stable, unless we live in a very stable, free democratic state. Stable, free democratic state. Uh, uh, stable, free democratic state. And this was happening actually when we move from pyramid number three into pyramid number four. Pyramid number three will be able to manage to create such leadership, which will take us to work inside our country or to explore other countries and other sites outside or to explore other actually planets that actually our leaders will take us. So to go from the, the, the intellectual leadership into the ambitious and the ambition of such leadership to explore other 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 resources in different parts of the world. So from pyramid number one, emotional, to social, to intellectual, to ambitious. And then number five will take us like what we see nowadays, the race between Russia, China, and uh, uh, USA about uh, space, space race. And will actually will take us to swim outside among the galaxies, going to this, uh, to Mars, to the Moon, to other 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 planets outside. Then from there, if we if we as individuals, if we as people, if we as country, are following the divine principles, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will give us more knowledge, more knowledge from so from His own divine knowledge to explore more and more and more and more. So we go we go from the reaction, which is very basic to the social, to the intellectual, to the ambitious, to the outside world where we swim among the galaxies and planets, then the divine knowledge of Allah SWT will be granting, granted to us if we really, if we really are connected uh, to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in, in his kingdom, Subhanahu wa Taala. Then after that, it will be the finite, the indefinite, the indefinite, the indefinite uh, Pyramid building because we're just going multiplying, 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 multiplying. Because actually, if we link our knowledge to the knowledge of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, if we submit ourselves to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we go from uh, pyramid number six to build more pyramids, which actually uh, will be uh, we, we, have, we have endless, uh, endless way of building pyramids. This is this actually the number of pyramids. So the pyramids we can build is us. We'll be able to build them inside our community, inside our social domain. How can we climb the stairs? Okay, we need stairs. Like 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 I show you the 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 image of the young uh, man was climbing the stairs or the ladder to see the basic. The, the first basic step of climbing the stairs to see what's behind is freedom with 11 points, 11 points to climb to enable us to climb each pyramid, to climb each pyramid 
and to go from pyramid number one to pyramid number two to pyramid number three to pyramid number four and so on. The first step will be, or the first step will be freedom. Freedom. Second, because, because without freedom, we'll not be able to go anywhere. Because freedom is the source of motivating, pioneering actions of empowering the community of exploring the potential of every individual in your community, in your country, in your society, if they are free. If they are not free, you cannot explore any potential of the community members, this number one. Number two, freedom will give us the, the, the choice, the free choice of to choose our belief as well. Whether we become Christian, whether we become Muslim, whether we become Jews, whether we become any, any, any belief that we have, okay? Freedom also, will let us to be able to build actually our the first and most important unit in the civil society uh, of the civil organization in, 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 the, in, in the country, which is the family. You will go from freedom to the belief to the family itself. Family is the most important unit that stabilize the whole, not only the whole society or the whole, community, it is the state, it is the country, it is the universe as well. Point number four, we have to look at education. It's all the steps to climb the pyramids. Education, learning, seeking knowledge, and commanding the Arabic language. Why I'm saying commanding the Arabic language in spite of the fact that most of the people are listening to me are not Arabs. I'm saying this because of that because of the richness of the Arabic language, because the, the, the number, incredible number of the proverbs and of the metaphor of the Arabic language, because of the ability of the Arabic language to widen and broaden the spectrum of your thinking because of its metaphor and the diversity, because of all of this, it's a challenge. I'm not asking you to be Muslims. I'm not asking you to be Arab, but I'm asking you to explore a language to broaden, to broaden the horizons of your thinking. This is step number four. Number five in our uh, stairs to climb the pyramids is the ethics and the moral values, including respect, recognition, sacrificing, gratitude, uh, humility, patience, perseverance, generosity, altruism and preferences, and love. This is the ethics. There's no climbing uh, pyramid or no foundation for, 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 for civilization or innocence without, without ethical and moral values. Number six, building the social movement. How? Through communication, acquaintance, networking, bridge and trust building, building partnership, empowerment, and building future social uh, leadership. This is building a social movement. Number seven, building civil society organization, as I mentioned before, and the first unit was actually the family itself, building civil society sector, and building state institution. Number eight is our culture, history, social cognitive thoughts, and languages. Number nine is building the social, creative, cultural characters, building the leadership, the young leaders of today, of the young leaders of tomorrow. Number 10, transferring the social and scientific knowledge to fellow citizens or and to, and to the generation to come. Number 11, to be traveling among these different societies, understanding them, learning from them, transferring knowledge, spreading their plight, and defending their cause. So it goes from the freedom through the foundation of all these 11 steps to climb any pyramid is freedom from the very beginning. It's freedom from the very beginning. And this actually how we go from freedom, faith, building family, education, ethics, community mobility, culture, history, building civil society, an institution, and uh, transferring knowledge, uh, knowledge between society and actually uh, going actually to different societies and different countries as well, and defending other countries and other societies.
So this is how we climb the stairs, or this is how we climb the steps to look from one pyramid to another pyramid, to go from one pyramid to another pyramid. Right. So we have, we, have, we have the six or seven pyramids that I mentioned them before. Then we have actually these actual steps to climb, actually to reach the top of the each pyramid. Then the dimension and the degrees and the others. There's a painful question now. What is the painful question? Make a painful question to the Muslim Ummah and the Arab Ummah. Uh, where are we from these pyramids and these stairs? I go back. I go back. Where is the Muslim Ummah and the Arab Ummah from these pyramids? It stands between the pyramid number one and pyramid number two. It could not be able to go to pyramid number three. Why? Because of the restricted or the shrinking space of freedom and the shrinking space of civil liberty. The shrinking of civil liberty space of the Arab and Muslim Ummah. Unfortunately, pyramid, that's why we cannot move the community, the Muslim countries, yes, and the, the society to go to the intellectual. We find a lot of Muslims and the Arabs in the West are in pyramid three and pyramid four. Who was the who was the one who uh, discovered the vaccine for COVID in Germany originally was Turkish. Okay, and others in America and Europe and other places. But he was sent to a free, a freer country. That's why he managed him and his wife to go from the second, the third pyramid to the fourth pyramid because of the freedom. Because since we don't have this kind of civil liberty space in most of the Muslim and Arab countries, that's why we cannot move from the social, even are not very good in social. Most of our organization is stuck in the first pyramid because they look after the money. They actually, they, the, the, the target becomes money, 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 money. They become money driven, not needs driven. This is where the pyramids are, where we lie in the between the first and second pyramid. So the second part of the question is, where are we in the ascending stairs? We've well, got 11 steps. 11 steps, freedom, faith, family, education, ethics, community, wealth, and on, and going on, 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 on. We're still standing on the foundation of the first step or the first stair of freedom. Unfortunately, 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 because what? Because of the shrinking of the civil liberty space and the lack of freedom of quite a lot of countries in the Arab world and the Muslim world, unfortunately. The lack of the shrinking civil liberty space and the shrinking and, 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 and the lack of freedom are the, in, this, in, in these countries, which will lead us to still standing, actually, on the first step, not the others. That's why we cannot compete with other European or American or Japanese or Chinese or uh, 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 ummas. This actually make my heart, makes my heart bleed. What is the solution? There's no other solution, but the only solution is to grab, to grab your freedom from the devil's fang, building the freedom movement and grappling such a freedom from the devil's fangs, nothing else. If we are not free, if we are being used as slaves, we'll never be able to go from pyramid number two to pyramid number three and so on, and we'll still be still for hundreds of years in pyramid number one, not even completing pyramid number two. 
after exploring, after actually talking about this problem, young men and women, let me give you a special message. Because this was an idea. Um, this was not a lecture prepared like, like the academia, preparing their own lecture. This was an idea which I wanted to bring it to you. Let us know, young people, and I believe that you know what I'm going to talk about, that there are many ambitions for life, many ambitions for life and to life. The movement of our lives cannot go ahead, cannot go ahead or continue without dedicating our endeavors to realize our ambition. We have to realize our ambition. We have to be ambitious. We have to be ambitious. We have to be ambitious. Dear young, 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 young people, let us believe that the foundation of our, what is the foundation of our ambition is, the foundation of our ambition is, the foundation of our ambition is science and knowledge. That's number one. Experience and expertise, number two. Vision and hope, number three. Trying, then succeeding or failing, number four. Attainment and redirecting our path with, uh, with being patient and continue working. I say, I, say, I say again, science and knowledge, experience, expertise, vision and hope. Trying, then succeeding or failing, attainment and recording. Uh, our path with what? With being patient and continue, continue, continue working. This is, there's nothing, this is, I'm ambition, let me do it. Do it on what basis? You have to have a strong foundation coming from these uh, five or uh, 10 or 12 uh, uh, points, which I mentioned too. There is no ambitions without randomness. With, uh, there is no ambition with randomness. Randomness cannot get you your ambition. There is no ambition without, with, with randomness. There is no success without knowledge. No progression without experience. No achievement without trying. No correction without, com without confession. And no vision without struggling to fulfill your hope. I said that again, again, and again, and again, and again. No ambition, uh, uh, no ambition uh, with, ram with, with randomness. Okay. No success without knowledge. No progression without experience. No achievement without trying. No correction without conf confession and no vision without struggling to fulfill your hopes. If we live, young people, on the legacy of our forefathers and ancestors and the, what they have done and achieved, will never make any progress. We'll never make any progress in our current situation. Stop talking about uh, the great history of Islam, the great history of the Roman, the great history of the Greek, no. The great history of those people have been made by people lived at the time, not by me and by you. Why? What I'm saying, stop talking about the great achievement of the past. We learn from it. Because if our ancestors are living with us today, the people who made the history, they will change the path of future history for generations to come. Because this is their ability. That's why they made this kind of achievement, civilization, and built the Renaissance. They will change the path of future history that the generations to come will enjoy. And they could not have sat down like us to talk about the history of their ancestors. If they are living with us nowadays, they will not sit down to talk because they are achievers. They were achievers in the past. And if we keep living, listen to me, my young people. Listen to me, young people. And if we keep living inside this little bubble, little bubble of us, the bubble of sorrow, blame culture, the dilemma, the dilemma of blame culture, and, and, and this little bubble that we are living inside it will take us to a very bigger balloon. Balloon, big one. Or bigger bubble. Of the greater loss inside which 
many dreamers like myself and business like others and well wishers perished. Stop, stop living inside this little bubble of blame and sorrow and agony and come out and face the reality. Why those dreamers and well wishers perished? Because they failed to change their dreams into action and achievement. And being afraid of imprisonment, displacement, torture, and being terminated on the hand or by, by the hand of the brutal, corrupt tyrant and the regimes. Because they were so scared. They have the great, they had the greatest idea. But they could not be able to open their mouths. That's why I come back again and say freedom is the foundation of civilization. Freedom is the foundation of renaissance. Freedom is the foundation of, uh, of pioneering. Freedom is the foundation of social change, of revolution, actually, and, and, and. Young men and women, life is having different movements inside life that we will pass that to pass the leadership to the future generation and our duty in this life is to pass our leadership to future generation to come not to sit forever becoming leaders our duty is to pass our leadership to future generation to come life is having different signs and we have to discover the entity of the applicable implementation. Life is having different cycles, elevating the sincere and pious individuals and dumping the corrupt, hypocritical tyrants even at a later time, at a later date. Quite often we say that all oh, those corrupt people controlling our country, stealing the money from our country, stealing those from our country, Life actually, or Allah with the justice, will never let them to stay forever. The life cycle will change them. But you have to be working actively and progressively to make the social change, the necessary social change. Life is having many wonders inside life, many wonders. And they are a part of the greater heavenly wonders created by Allah for the most pious believers like all of you, and whenever we discover one of them, such a discovery will lead us to more discoveries till Allah ends this life. And whenever we discover a wonder, Allah will lead us to discover another wonder, and so on. Our life, young people, is a comprehensive, complicated, structured, homogeneous, geometrical entanglement. Alatani, comprehensive, complicated, structured, homogeneous, geometrical entanglement. Swimming, our life is swimming in the oceans of its horizons and the depths of its seas according to the most joyful creative system put by whom? By Allah. Put by whom? By Allah. Put by whom? By Allah. Yep, uh, our life is comprehensive is a comprehensive, complicated structure of homogeneous geometrical entanglement swimming in the oceans of its horizons, the depth of its seas, according to the most joyful creative system put by Allah for us. Let us believe that. And you know better than myself, your role, young people, is to manage and direct the affairs of social life. To manage and direct the affairs of social life. Not according to theories that we imagine, but according our continuous, consistent discoveries of the different life systems put by the Creator to sustain, stabilize the geomet geometrical movement of life on this planet. And this is how to go about it. Let us believe that your role is to manage and direct the affairs of social life, 
that according to our theories that we imagine, but according the different life systems put by the creator to sustain and stabilize the geometrical movement of life on this planet. This will lead us to discuss two points. Because we are following Allah's system. We are following the system of being created, put by the creator. Point number one, believing that Earth, galaxies, and the other planets have been created by the creator according to his, his unchallengeable laws and system that might not be discovered by all scientific scholars and researchers, even if they were working hard back to back. Let us accept this and believe in this. This is number one. Number two, positive learning. Positive learning. Education and the, take positive learning as a serious issue. Positive learning, education, and the applied experimental knowledge which was given to us in the first verse in the Quran, revealed Abu Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the word Iqra. Quite a lot of us, a lot of people think that the word Iqra is read and write. Wrong, wrong, wrong. The word Iqra is, uh, it means diving into the depth of the scientific and cognitive knowledge, not just read and write. Your Imam, because they don't have the scientific knowledge or the intellectual knowledge, they tell you Muhammad was not able to read and write. That's what but Allah inspired them to know the knowledge. But the word Iqra means actually uh, to go, to dive in the depth of scientific and cognitive knowledge. Based on what? Based on what? Look at based on what, young people. Number one, research-based education keen to discover the merest truth. Unfortunately, the Ummah of Iqra do not believe in research. Even the charitable organization of Iqra Ummah does not spend money on research. Enough. Number two, experimental applicable educational system built on humanity. And you cannot just do research without actually experimenting it. Applicable, applied. Apply and experimental and applied. Experimental applicable educational system built on humility and their communication. Look at actually in the secondary school or even the the, the preparatory, preparatory school. Don't have a science lab in most of the countries. Unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately. Most of the Arabs and Muslim countries. There's no laboratory labs. Cost money. Experimental applicable educational system built on humanity and communication. Number three, knowledge and science transfer to different generations. We should not keep it with one generation only. Should be knowledge should be treated like air, like wind, should be passed from a generation to generation, from individual to individual. Knowledge and science transfer to different generations based on the creation of future leadership. So we have to create future leadership. Making the measuring scale of our social affairs consist of freedom. Our measuring scale will be made out freedom, justice, equality, and fraternity. Uh, based on believing in protecting communities, assets, wealth, and safety of everyone. Yani our scale, uh, the measuring scale of our social affair would be made out of freedom, justice, and equality. To protect what? To protect community assets, wealth, safety for everyone. Nowadays, you can see some some so-called uh, leaders or presidents or kings, whatever it is, uh, wasting the natural resources and the assets of their own countries without consulting them. Dear young people, because you are the young people, I'm trying to be with you. 
We have to walk the walk inside the social movement. We have to keep walking the walk, not talking the talk. Talk too much, no good. Like actually, you know what? When we people sit down and have shisha and start to think and put in the shisha something to make them think high, we'll have caught and keep chewing caught like in different Shumat. In Somalia or Djibouti or Yemen, unfortunately, and people think outside in different planet. Okay. They dream, but they cannot do anything because they are they are they are in illusion. I have to walk the walk inside the social uh, movement to step up the first step. You know what is the first step I mentioned to you? Freedom. You have we have to earn our freedom from this tyranny and tyrant ruling our countries. To draw the first line inside the unique corners. To, to draw the first lines inside its unique corners. You have to draw the first line. To write the alphabet of its cognitive encyclopedia and provide all necessary strength and instrument needed to compose the symphony of the immortal immortality of life. This is what you need to do. Change, change the alphabet, change the music, change the music, music notes, change all these sort of things. Then after that, I'll ask you five or six stupid questions. Five or six stupid questions. First of all, I said we can go from the re uh, reactionary pyramid to the social, to the intellectual, to the exploring, to the different planets, to go from a planet to a planet, from galaxy to a galaxy, and so on. When you go to these planets, as I mentioned earlier in, in the pyramids, will you be able to live on these newly discovered planets like America is doing, like Russia is doing, maybe China is doing, maybe Japan is doing, but we are not doing anything. Will the new generations living on these newly discovered planets be able to build new resistance and civilization there? First, will they be able to live there? Will they be able to build civilization there? Number three, will we be able to transfer this knowledge from there and the experience to the citizens of Earth and other planets as well? Down and Sideways, will we be able to do that? Will we be able to communicate with one another and with the creation living on these planets? Will there be any creation living on these planets and will be able to communicate with them to understand their language and their needs and their lifestyle? And will we be able to live together with them on the same planet? Will we see where going? All these questions, because, because my, my, my idea was about, about what? About to think outside the box. Question number, uh, I think, uh, five. Will we be able to marry some of these creatures living on these planets and have matrimonial relationship? I'm asking stupid questions. But stupid questions coming. Why? Because I'm thinking outside the box. I'm thinking outside the box. I want you to think outside the box. Will our Creator, Almighty Subhanahu wa Taala, this is a question number six, will reveal some of His divine knowledge to us? As I mentioned, all this universe are being created by one system, by one Creator. No matter how much we sit down together, back to back as scientists and researchers, we won't be able to discover all the secrets of this universe. But will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show will shower his blessing on us and let us to understand and discover actually uh, this knowledge, discover uh, the secrets of how did he create his universe? All these messages, you might look at it as strange, stupid, unimaginable, sometimes unacceptable questions. 
And others will create all these strange, sometimes unacceptable questions, and others will create challenges for us. It's a challenge for you. It's a challenge for me. It's a challenge for the generation to come. Even if they seem these questions, those sex questions, imaginary, fictional, fairy, and not realistic, but they have to be asked. Somebody will ask you this question and more. And not realistic, particularly during this difficult time where hundreds of millions of people are suffering from poverty, ignorance, and some of them living in displacement, becoming refugees as a direct result of armed conflicts, climate change, state corruption, and unemployment. And in spite of the fact we are having these problems affecting the people living in the, of, 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 on, the, on, on the earth, on the planet earth, we have to ask this question. We have to respond to the needs of the people on the planet earth as well as think ahead of what we need to do uh, uh, to discover other plants. My last statement for you, young men and young women, is if we aim high, if you aim high, if I aim high, if we aim high, we cannot complain of what? Of suffering, becoming tired, fatigued, depressed, or hopeless. No way. No complaint, because they have a very high aim. Very high aim. If we aim high, cannot complain uh, of suffering, becoming tired, or fatigued, depressed, or feel hopeless at all. Such highness we are trying to reach should be moral and value-based, not for personal, profiteering, fame, and the glittering glamour, and the glittering glamour it should be for the community, for the society, for humanity. I thank you very much for being with me uh, during this difficult talk, which I was trying as much as I can to explain to you my idea, which is the pyramids and uh, uh, the stairs or the steps. Uh, as you can see it at the very beginning here. See, this is actually where, when I talked about it. The idea is about how to build pyramids. And the idea, uh, this idea actually came to me and they wanted to bring it to you. See, most of my communication with you is based on my personal idea, uh, not some reading that I have done, uh, but actually some thinking that I have uh, thought about uh, to transfer them to you. Uh, God bless you, and uh, may Allah bless you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.